Even though we've installed a backup camera and monitor in this motorhome here, you never can have too much protection when it comes to backing up. Sometimes you get distracted, sometimes a child may jump in the back, or heck, it could be something that you just didn't see when you're looking in the monitor or looking in your mirrors. One way you can enhance the safety system on any RV is to install a backup alarm. You know those backup alarms you see all the time from factory vehicles? Now, the, here's a system that can be done by the do-it-yourselfer, and there are just a very few components, it's wireless, and it, and it makes it very, very convenient for the, for the driver to know that there's something back there. Now, it, just a very few parts here. You've got a monitor that goes on the dash, and then you have uh, an ECU, which is your control unit. That'll be mounted some, someplace underneath the rig. It's got a little antenna here, so it allows you to uh, you know, send the signal wirelessly. And then the key to this thing will be the sensors. Now these sensors, as you can see here, they're really small, and they'll go on the back bumper, and they have a bracket here that allows them to be mounted very easily. No doubt, installing a system like this, which is fairly easy to do, will give you another level of security when traveling on the road, especially when you're making maneuvers in campgrounds. Okay, Bill, we need a foot, right? We need a foot, if you'll hold that end. And I'll put a little bit of a mark here. Perfect. You know, it looks like we've got pretty lucky here with the uh, sensors because this bumper has got a flat spot underneath it and those brackets will mount just perfectly, won't they? Yeah, they're, it's absolutely perfect. It's thin metal. Will, will, it'll be easy to drill and the, it'll, it should work great. And actually, they look really nice there. So I'm going to start by drilling some holes and mounting this bracket right on the bottom of the bumper. I'm going to drill one hole and then I'm going to mount it and I'm going to drill the other hole so it'll be pretty accurate. And lock washer on the top. I'm not going to tighten this one all the way yet. I'm just going to get it snug to hold it in place so that I can drill the other hole accurately. And I'm going to make sure it's really straight with a bumper. I'm a little bit blind up on the top here. It's kind of hard to see from here, but oh, I got it. A little help from a cordless driver. Makes it look good. So I'm gonna install sensor number four. They need to be in order, one, two, three, and four. One starting at the driver's side. Uh, the sensor has an up position right on top of it, making sure that that's up. Just snap it into place and the wire is plug and play. I'll plug it in later and there's one sensor done. Hey, Bill, we got lucky here. We could drill right through this compartment here. Man, no kid, it's gonna be a lot easier. Yeah, than... we got total access to it. All right. Okay, if you drop that down through there, oh, perfect. Yeah. Hold on to it. Okay, I got it. Okay, let me get a couple of washers on here. Hang on. 
Okay, I got it started. Okay, hey, you know what, Bill? I can turn if you want. Yeah, why don't you turn it from up there and I'll just hold it back up on it. Hold right, on, let me get the wrench on it. All right. Okay, go ahead and tighten it all the way. Okay. That's pretty tight. Okay, perfect. Hold on, let me drill you another hole. Nice work. Okay, let me get it. Hold on, Bob. Let me okay. get it started. Just let me know when you're ready. Yeah, there's really tight here. I uh, figured, yeah. Okay, I got it started. Okay, I got back up. Go ahead and tighten it. I think we're there. Okay, perfect. Let me go. I got the antenna pointing straight down, which it needs to be. And I've actually mounted this in case it really hits something, it can actually fold back on itself rather than breaking well, that, it off. That's, that's a real good idea, yeah. And I'm just gonna install this sleeve here. It just kind of keeps it rigid from mm. the wind blowing it back and forth. You can see it'll still move, but it keeps us pointing straight down, which is what we need. Yeah, I'm glad that you're gonna have the thing so it'll, be, well, I don't know, it'll bend a little bit, I guess. No, it'll go, if it has to, it'll go all the way back. All right, good. Piece of cake. All right, I guess wiring's next, huh? Yep. Okay, Bill, we got lots of wires here, but I think we probably should pick up the hot and, and the negative, right? Yeah, let's make, and let's pay close attention to the numbers if we want one, two, and three oh, to be in order. you want to hook up the sensors first, or you want to just go ahead and... Oh, uh, yeah, let's hook up the sensors first. Okay, you got, but, where's number one? You yeah. got number one? Oh, it's right here. And there's two. I'll put you got a, two there? Okay, yeah. I got one and two. I think we probably should, uh, I don't know, that's fine. Boy, they give you a lot of, a lot of wire here. So I'm actually, I've got a hold of the power wire. I'm just gonna go ahead and run it. Okay. Over. Now these things are really nice. They, uh, they screw right in place here. Yeah, they're very solid. I like them. Yeah. And they have to be waterproof. Okay. One or two. We got lots of extra wire here to deal with. Well, the ECU is never, well, you never know where this is going to happen. Yeah, it, it can, I mean, yeah. they've just planned for it to be far away if they needed to. Okay, so where should we just, where are we going to put all the extra Well, wire? we'll just... You know what we can do? We can bundle it. Yeah, it we'll just there. bundle it right there and put it... Yeah. All right, so now I'll run these, these wires here. So they're out of the way. Ready to be bundled. Okay, I've got number four here. How are you coming over I'll there, I want to are connected. Okay, number three has got to be left here somewhere. That was probably the last one, huh? How do you want to route this thing? You know, I say I went right over the frame here and then I'm going to zip tie it. There's a hole right here. You need to go right over like this? Yeah, I went over, see where I went over the frame, yeah, and then I'm going to zip tie it in this hole right here. Start all over again on that one, we're going to go over the frame. It kind of got it out of the way a little bit. Yeah, that makes it very clean there. Okay. How are you coming there? Well, here we go. You got this here. Here's number two. You want to bundle them all together? Or? No, go ahead and bundle yours, and I'll bundle mine. All right. I'm just going to make a loop in it here. And then I'll That's zip good. tie it right up out of the way. I got around my elbow here. And <laughs> you got it all. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, we got some wire here. Holy smoke. No. Now, if I can squeeze up in here. Thank God for cable ties. Boy, no kidding. There hey, we don't go. You, don't you wish you invented these? Well, I do wish I invented those. <laughs> We'd both be retired because I'd be working for you. <laughs> Okay, you got one more there. Yeah, did you by any chance uh, bring the cutters? I did. So you mean so we can trim off the excess cable ties? You know what, I don't like the way that works. So I think I'm gonna take it on the other way here. Okay. I'm gonna cut this one off and start a little again on there this one. There you go. One. While you're doing that, give me those, give me the cutters again. Let me, let me, let me pop this. I've got to find the wire to reverse, so oh, yeah. I know it's up in here. Yeah, there's got to be something in the, in the loom going up to that section. Yeah, they, I know it's here somewhere. I just need to get it 
here where I can get to it. And I know it's the red wire, and here it is. Are you doing okay there? Yep, I just want to keep really, really tight so it's nice and tidy. Actually, I'm gonna strip, I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready here. While you're doing that. All right. I think we're gonna be in pretty good shape here. And I need, as soon as you're done, no, you're not using, okay, let me, I'm gonna go ahead and crimp this ground lug on here. Are you able to find the, uh, the wire yet? I found the red wire. So I'm just gonna need you to go put it in reverse in a minute. And okay, just let me know. How are you coming there? I'm ready to just, like, one more cable tie. Well, these are pretty long. Yeah, they're kinda, them. they're kinda long, but they'll do the trick. I gotta be careful I don't cut one of the cables, huh? No, <laughs> I've done it in my day. Okay, go ahead, you gonna cut. I can't reach that one. I get that one in there. And the antenna's pointing down, perfect. That looks good. Okay, I'll have to get something here to get this attached here to keep it. I think it'll stay there fine, it's tight. Mine's mm -hmm. not going anywhere. It's pretty tight. Yeah, I don't think it can go anywhere. I don't think it'll go anywhere, quite frankly, it's, it's there. So All right. I need okay. you, uh, why don't you go put it in reverse? I'll go put it in reverse and you can get some, uh, Hook up to the hot and cold. Yeah. Right. Okay, we're in reverse, Bill. Oh, perfect. So I, I knew it was a red wire. I looked, I pulled the tail light out earlier and I saw which wire went uh, to the reverse light, to the backup light. So I knew it was red and I put the probe on it and it was correct. So I'm going to butt connect the wire right in place. Perfect. Then I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pull one of these screws right here and it go into the bottom of the frame. And I should be able to get a good ground right there. And everything looks good, so I'm gonna zip tie this up, back up out of the way if I can get my hands in there. Okay, we, are, we got power, everything looks like it's hooked up. We'll go inside, mount the monitor, and give it a test. We have a really compact monitor that's gonna give us an audible and a visual alert when, we, when there's any kind of an obstruction. So it actually can be mounted anywhere on the dash, but we found a place that works really nicely. It kind of fits just about perfect right there. It gives us enough uh, wire to, to get into the engine compartment so we can hook it up. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna clean the surface so we don't have to, so that the two-phase tape will stick. So we'll just take one of these pads here with alcohol in it, and we're just gonna clean up the surface here and clean it up in here. You know, it's gonna take a while for it to dry, but just take a clean paper towel or a Kleenex and wipe it one direction so you don't leave any lint. And that'll dry relatively quickly. And we have this two-faced tape. It's a, it's a large piece of it, so it fits just about perfect on, on the monitor here. Now, we may not need the whole thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it because, uh, you know, bouncing around over time and sun, it could release it. So we're just gonna put the uh, tape, two-faced tape right there. And 
probably only get one shot at, um, at sticking this thing, but we'll just be as careful as possible. Now this is, of course, this is a, a matter of taste where you want it, and I'm just gonna put it here. Seems like I have a pretty good view right there, and it seems to stick really nicely. And I've got lots of wire that allow me to route it to the front, because the fuse panel for this in this Class C motorhome is under the hood in the front, and, and fortunately, it's it's on the, the, the driver's side, so we don't have to use excess wire. So th in order to do that, I'm going to take a, a long screwdriver and, and some tape and punch it. We've already punched a hole through a boot in there. We don't want a big hole, but just enough to get the wire through. And in order to route it, I'm just gonna take the um, little tape here We don't need much of it. And just hold it right here. Now we want to be able to get the tape off. So what I always recommend is you take and, and bend it back on itself like that. So you've got kind of a, a loose end here. Now I'm going to get out and, and push it through to the, through the boot and then Bill will, will retrieve it and hook it up to the fuse panel. Okay, now you don't have a whole lot of room under here, but just kind of work my hands in here. And I'm going to go right through there. Bill, you see it? I do. All right. So I've already pulled the wires through the firewall, and I've already looked at the schematic, so I know which fuse I want to tap. Uh, but I do want to make sure that it does have power. There's not something wrong. So I'm going to have him put it in reverse while I take the test light and make absolutely certain we have power there. Bob, put it in reverse. So I've got power on both sides of the fuse, so I do have the correct fuse. We do have power there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that fuse, and I'm gonna put in this fuse tap. It's really a clever idea. It really makes it much cleaner. We know once we put this in, it's gonna stay there. It's not gonna have a loose connection somewhere. So I'm gonna pull the other fuse out. They don't make it easy to get to, but I'm going to put the fuse right in the other side of the fuse tap here. It's already made for it. So before I plug this tap into the fuse block, I'm going to hook it up to the uh, to the wire first, the trigger wire. So th this is the trigger wire. It's actually when you put it in reverse, it's going to trigger the monitor. So it's a lot easier to hook this up here than to try to do it down in that limited space I have down there. I'm gonna go around this so I can, it doesn't get hung up. Now I need the ground wire attached. There again, I'm gonna put the terminal on here so I don't have to do it down in the hole. Now there's, there's no screw anywhere that I can put this under, so I'm gonna pretty much, I'm gonna take a self-tapping screw, and if I can get down in here, I'm just gonna run this screw right into a frame piece or something down here. Mm, perfect, worked great. Now if I can get it out of the way here, I'm going to put the cover back on and we are ready to go for a test. Even putting the cover on is a challenge in these newer motors. Okay, Bob, I'm done under here. Uh, so I think all we need to do now is uh, set the zero distance and we're ready to test. Right, let's get her set up. 
So we're gonna set this at zero, Bob, because there's nothing protruding back behind the motor arm. So our, our sensors are flush with the back of the bumper. If you have a spare tire uh, or a box or anything like that, you're gonna need to measure that and you're gonna need to add that distance and that'll be your zero point before you go to set it. All right, let's get zero on this. So I'm gonna hold the button down while I turn on the ignition and you can see that it scrolls very rapidly. So I'm gonna stop it at one point here those are 21 feet. Once you get to 21, click it one more time, two times. Zero. Now you're at zero. Now we're zeroed out. So then you leave it for three seconds, and, uh, and there you go. Okay, the screen's and on. We're going to okay, go. All we ready. need to do is back up and give it a test. All right, we'll do that. Whoa! Hey, man, I'm a believer. <laughs> 